a light has risen in the darkness for the upright of heart. The Lord in generous mercy, the Lord is generous, merciful, and just. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We call to mind our sins in times and ways wherein we have been failing perhaps to read the signs of the times. In moments and ways wherein, in context of trials and sufferings, in our chastisements and revelations, perhaps we have, or perhaps we are losing hope. Hope in the Lord. In the struggle, in the battle between the confrontation of what is good and what is evil. As we are failing in hope and maybe even in faith, well, we ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. And so we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Cast your kindly light upon your faithful Lord, we pray, and with the splendor of your glory, Set their hearts ever aflame, that they may never cease to acknowledge their Savior and may truly hold fast to him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is true. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, 
that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. You who believe in the name of the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has granted peace in your borders with the best of wheat. He fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Hallelujah. The report about him spread all the more, 
and great crowds assembled to listen to him. They be cured of their ailments and to be wounded or but to be cured of their ailments but he would withdraw to the certain places to pray. The Gospel of the Lord. There is an ancient saying, actually it came from Socrates, whatever is received is received according to the way or the filter or the disposition or the condition of the receiver. Another way of saying that is whatever you see outside is according to basically the disposition inside. Here the last line says, but he would withdraw to the certain places to pray. And this is a very, very important line. Because when we pray, we transcend the way of the human into the way of the spirit. Much or many of a way of seeing things bring us forms or feelings of discouragement because, in many ways, we see things just from the perspective of being human. But that's not true. What is not true? You and I, we are not just something material. You, are, you and I, you are not just something of what is called physical or body. In fact, what is material is only a modifier, something that adds to the basic. What is the basic? That you and I are spirits. It's kind of hard to maybe even accept or feel that. But it's so true that the price is you are, I am an embodied spirit. Having said that, it is this act of going into a deserted place to pray for us to enter into the realm of the Spirit. That's why the Church, in the great tradition of the Church, has been reminding us, pray, and pray without ceasing and meditate and contemplate so that you will see the perspective of truth not just from the way of the humans from the way of what is magical from the way or the ways of the world and the way or the ways of the spirit what do we have in the light of today's First reading, this is the one who came through water 
and blood of Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies. Testifies to what? To truth. Many times, the problem in the church, in all levels, is that what is being seen, what is being described, what be, is being perceived, what is being judged, is just on the level of the natural. What is forgotten is the most fundamental, the most basic, what is foundational. The realm of the spirit. So true is this that we seldom talk about, as I said a few times here, Salus Animarum Suprema Lex, the salvation of souls. We talk about so many problems, human development, racism, immigration, poverty, justice, global warming, name them all. Where is God? Where is the Spirit? Where is God leading us? Are we just social worker? Are we just social being engaging in social media? Whatever. Yes, the Spirit is the one who testifies. What am I driving? Jesus says, read the signs of the times. And then people say, oh, yeah, it's going to rain. I know it's kind of cloudy. Oh, it's going to have a, I think we will have a sunny day today. Is that all in terms of reading the signs of the times? How many times Jesus says, Oh, you little faith. Faith brings us, allows us to see truth, reality in another level in a deep, deeper level, in the fullness, in the fullness of level, in what is closer or closest, if not what truth is all about. And therefore, let, let us not forget this. He went, he withdrew to the certain places to pray. This is the significance what the church has been reminding us in our great tradition of the last 2,000 years, founded by, of course, another 2,000 years in what is called the foundation of testament, the Old Testament. Look at the Psalms. Look at how Scripture has been written, of course, it's the Spirit, but the Spirit uses people the Spirit uses people for what? To pray and to meditate and to contemplate. What did they discover? Discover the wisdom of God in what is called the Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. So therefore, let us not be in the ways of the Psalms they have eyes, but they don't see, and ears, but they don't hear. They have mouth, but they don't speak. The wisdom of God. Why? Because they just remain on what is called the natural, the science. What is called the humanist, 
what this even called the modernist. Oh, you are traditional. What is that faith and all that? No, this is not what God's word is telling us today. The spirit. Let me repeat that line. The spirit um, is the one who testifies. The spirit is truth. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say here, the spirit is fake. Do you hear that word today? How often we hear that? The spirit is truth. Veritas. That's the word. And so therefore it's important for us to regain once more. Not just the consciousness of the, in the way we are, but reading the signs of the times, the events of our lives included, and in the way of being a disciple of Jesus. Where is faith? Where is God? Where is the Lord? Where is prayer? And therefore, where is or how is your way of perceiving the spirit of the Lord, not the spirit of the world. Please rise. And we continue to pray for our Holy Father, for Francis and our bishops throughout the world. All priests and deacons and religious men and women, the lay people, or are making whatever form of ministry in the church, that again and again they will be grounded in the spirit of truth, in the spirit that guides the church, in the holiness of light based on the holiness of God. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the healing of our world. The knowledge to all, including the tomorrow in the church, in the home, in the family. The God's way and the Spirit of the Lord will continue to reign and people and all the world will continue to have the spirit of truth. For this, we pray to the Lord. And we continue to, in particular, to pray for all those afflicted with illness or ailments, that their pains and sufferings and trials and difficulties, and even those included, of course, those who are not affected, that this moments in the, great, in the events of our times, will bring about God's great harvest. And there will be reparation in conversion and a great return to the ways of the Spirit of God. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the faithful departed. This is the long God before us. There's relatives and friends whom we know. Are there loved ones? And those that, what we call the forgotten ones, those who have nobody now, perhaps praying for them. That God's mercy and peace will be in each one. Eternal peace. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for Sarah Rose, for this intention, for this we pray to the Lord. And we raise to God all our intentions in this holy sacrifice given us. 
one in the offering, in the redemptive offering of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The people whom we promise to pray for. The people who are asking for our prayers. For all needs, body, soul, mind, and spirit. That God's blessings will continue to be in each one. Those of us who are here and those who are not here. For this we pray to the Lord. These are our prayers, Heavenly Father. We ask you to grant all our needs, all our express prayers, including those which you know so well are just deep in the depths of each one of us. We ask for your mercy. All this we ask the Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the, the bread we offer you through the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for three goods we have received. The wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people that what they profess with, de with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in christ as a light for the nations and when he appeared in our mortal nature you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew Pope, so that they may become false, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in this fashion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Hey, this. All of you eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Hey, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, and that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Myron our Bishop and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters of fullness sleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all those who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and be praised and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called in the supper of the Lamb.
communion and the pond. <clears throat> By this, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. Let's be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself. To Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. We go in the peace of Christ and continue to, to be one in His Spirit. Set for his mission. <clears throat> 